Hey everybody, Sean Adams here with To Get Seen, and today I'm gonna to go over life cycle marketing. We're gonna just kind of review the nine stages, make sure everybody has a, bit, a little bit of clarity on that. So I'm just gonna power through the nine stages. If you wanna go more in depth, check out some of the previous videos. So first stage of life cycle marketing or the client life cycle is target. Understand who your target is, who is your ideal client. You wanna make sure that you are actually pursuing the right person for what it is you offer. Some things to think about, why you? What makes you unique compared to your competitors? Also, objections. What objections might they have about what you offer so that you can prepare to answer those before they even object to them? No details about them, like their age, or their gender, or their marital status, or if they have children, if so, how old, what are their interests, and what is their income? You wanna to talk to them to make sure that they can afford what it is that you do. And education, how educated are them? Do you talk to them differently because of that? Location, East Coast is different than the West Coast people. I know, I've lived on both. Hobbies, what do they do? What's for fun? That's a great one. I always love to send some of my clients gift cards. I find out who their favorite author is and then anytime that author rolls out a new book, I'll send them a gift card to Amazon to buy that book. It's a nice little thing they can do. It's a great way of um, growing my relationship with my clients. Values, what do they value? In part, because you want to talk to them based on their values, but also you never want to violate one of their values. If I'm working with somebody who is a heavily religious person where um, they do not condone any kind of swearing, I have to make sure that my language is perfect, that kind of thing, just simple, easy. Um, just an idea. Also, after you've done all that, you also take the opposite of that and realize that's not your ideal client, so when that person starts to walk through their door, you know, I don't want to work with you. It's going to save you heartache in the long run if you can avoid the, the non-ideal clients. Next stage, stage two, attract interest. Now that you know who they are, where are they at? Find out where they at. Where do they hang out? What are they? What's their so either uh, physically where do they hang out or also online where they hang out? Social media, that kind of stuff. What is it that they actually want, and do you offer it? And how can you make sure they know that you offer it? The next thing is. Creating that right lead magnet. Lead magnet is that thing that they want that they're gonna ask and be willing to give you information about to get. Now when you're doing all of this, this is the place where people can go down a rabbit hole of trying to hang out with their ideal client everywhere. Remember, if it's important and urgent, you do that for first. If it's important but not urgent, you do that second. If it's not important but urgent, you do that third. And if it's not important and not urgent, you just don't do it. So. That is the next one. Next, stage three, collect leads. You want to be able to collect the leads. This is a way of capturing information and all of that. Uh, one place you can go to is togetseen.com front slash Infusionsoft. That is one lead page that I have. Another one is togetseen.com front slash training. It's another example of a lead page. These are my lead pages that I use with people. I'd love for you guys to check it out. Um, but you need to be able to build your own. You want to make sure that it's the right thing for the right person at the right time so that they will give you their information to get that lead magnet. Now, once you have their information, what do you do with them? Sell them? No, not yet. First, you have to, to educate them because people will always buy from people they know, like, and trust. You have to build that know, like, trust factor. So one of the easiest ways to do that is figure out what questions they have and answer them ahead of time. This can be through a series of emails. This could be through blog posts and social media posts, whatever it is. Also, how are you gonna address this? Like I was talking about, are they emails, websites, videos, white papers? How are you addressing those questions? And then where are you addressing these? Is it gonna be on a blog? Is it gonna be on a social media? Is it gonna be in a newsletter? Any of those things. You want to be able to grow that no like trust factor so that you can then do stage five, which is make an offer. This is where we wanna to get to. It's very simple, the more offers you make. First, you gotta figure out what is the offer? What's the right offer to make them? Um, then, when do you make that offer? What are you offering? When do you make that offer? You wanna understand the journey you want your client to go through. So you gotta figure out if you're making the right offer at the right time to the right person and the experience you want to have as they're going through the offer process. Better to offer to people that are hot, meaning that they already know, like, and trust you and are excited about you and that's gonna make a better sale for you. Know their objections. Once again, objections matter. If you can preempt their objections, the less objections they have, the more likely they are to buy. 
and then you need to convert them into a sale. So that's the next part where we actually close the sale. But before you start closing a sale, you have to keep in mind too that if you don't have an offer that's right for the people that you might be, that some of the people that are following you, you have to think about everybody else, not just the ones you made the offer to, but everybody else you're connected to. What are you doing with them? That's where a good nurture sequence comes in where you just keep sending them beneficial information until either you have a product that's right for them or until they become a they've changed in some way that makes them ideal for you. Um, I'm not a cheap person to hire to do the work that I do, so they have to have a certain amount of income before they'll hire me. So sometimes I will keep them in a year-long nurture, give them benefits until they can grow their business to the point where they can afford me. Then I'll, cl I'll make the offer for them to hire me because they couldn't have afforded me beforehand. So what's the point of making an offer they couldn't afford? Once they can afford it, they make the offer, it's an easier close. And they can afford me now because I gave them the information that got them to that point where they could afford me. Makes that close and that offer a lot easier. Next, you have to close, close more sales, makes you more money very simple very easy equation how do you want them to buy from you what's the process is it an online order form is it a swipe machine do you have something you can attach to your cell phone that you can just take their card right there and boom they're paid for whatever it is but you got to figure out how that's going to happen is it easy how do i make it easy for them to buy from me you do not want to over complicate over complicate this process a confused mind never buys if you're trying to close the sale and there's lots of stuff they have to do and things they have to keep track of it's not going to happen make it simple make it clean make it efficient then make it even easier figure out how it's easy and then make it even easier that will make a difference think about three things you can be doing right now <coughs> to improve your system to make it easier to close the sale once you've closed the sale you want to do stage seven which is deliver and wow not just deliver, but deliver and wow, over deliver. Make sure they get more than what they think they paid for. It makes a difference. What are five things that you can do in the first 30 days? Car, send them a card, make sure the packaging is cool, send them coupons, um, give them a personal phone call. And then this is where most people will fall off. And if you do this, you will make yourself that much better in your business is after that first 30 days, what are you going to do for the next 30 days from 31 to 60? Are you going to send them other cards, holiday announcements, birthdays, anniversary gifts, whatever it is, but somehow always over deliver over that 60 day span and make sure that you are wowing them. And think about what you personally can do to make sure that your customer is satisfied. Don't over automate things. You want to still have that personal touch and you want to ensure that they know you personally care about them, not just the business cares about them. Um, also, make sure you're getting their thoughts through pho surveys, phone calls, emails, things like that. You want to know what they think of the process, the program, the pro product, whatever they bought. Get their thoughts so that you can constantly improve on it so that it's the best possible thing out there. Um, and also, that's when you're going to find out if they're actually unhappy. They're not always going to tell you they are, but if you find out that they're unhappy, they say that they're unhappy, what can you do to convert that unhappy client into a happy client? That makes a world of difference. And in fact, when it comes to stage nine getting referrals, those folks that were unhappy that you became, that you turned happy, will become your absolute raving fans. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you have all that stuff in mind. Now, before we talk about getting referrals, we're going to talk about the easiest way to make more money, which is to offer more. It is much more cost efficient to get somebody who's already bought from you to buy something else than to try to get somebody new to buy something. So keep your current clients in mind and think about what you can offer them. Can you cross sell them something? Do you have something that is similar to the thing that you got them that will enhance the thing that they already got from you? Can you upsell them? Maybe there's something above and beyond what they got that's even better. This is that idea of, you know, you bought my online program. Now, why don't you take my coat, my group coaching? And after that, let's do some individual coaching and let's bring you into my mastermind. And you're upselling them up the ladder of all of the things that you have through your funnel. Um, and then also keep in mind new products. Current clients are the best people to try out new products offered at a discount. Create a system for them to be able to get feedback. They appreciate that they're getting new stuff for a significant discount. You're getting feedback from people who already know, like, and trust you. Therefore, they're going to be more honest. And then when you eventually roll out the new product to non-current customers, you're rolling out a better product, which means that people are going to more likely want to get it. All that stuff matters. That's the reason why offering more matters. Last, get referrals. Word of mouth advertising is the single best way to have advertising for your business. If you can turn your current customers into raving fans and get them to go out and tell the world about you, you save money on marketing, you get more customers, and those customers are going to be more likely to buy because they're buy, they got recommended to you from somebody that they already know, like, and trust. So you're borrowing that know, like, and trust factor. 
getting referrals matters. The easiest way to do that, ask. Ask your current customers. Do you know somebody who could benefit from whatever it is that you've just done for them? Asking for referrals makes it is the way to get referrals. People are not going to just randomly refer you. Usually asking for it is going to make a world of difference in that. Reward them. When they do give you a referral, make sure you send something as a thank you to the person who did the referring. It doesn't have to be major. It could be just a $5 gift card to their favorite coffee shop, but it still matters because then they're going to want to refer more often. You're going to grow your business nicely. And if you can build a system to track all those referrals and make sure you know when somebody referred somebody and be able to do all that, it works. I personally use Infusionsoft for all of these stages of the client life cycle. It's very efficient, very effective. So Sean Adams, To Get Seen, check it out. This makes a difference to you guys. It will make a difference. This is the secret sauce. If you're missing one of these nine ingredients in your sauce, your sauce is not going to be as good. You are not going to be as successful in your business. Keep all nine stages of life cycle marketing in mind, and you will be successful. Cheers.